change it up a little bit, trying to be a little professional today. Um, but I got to have the fitted, you know what I'm saying? So I got my shirt tie because we're talking about we, we talk about some professional things today. In this video, we're going to talk about non-tech cybersecurity positions you can find out there. Most of the time when people think cyber, they think, oh, you got to know all this technical stuff. You got to be a legit hacker. You have to be a computer geek, a nerd, somebody deep in the weeds, typing into command line all day. You have to know all the commands. You have to know all the options and the keys and all this stuff. Totally not true. Okay. Cyber does entail a lot of that for very particular positions. But the good news is you don't have to be a technical person to have a, a good and well-paying job in cybersecurity. It is not the case. You could relax. There are um, definitely prerequisites that you should understand. You should have a definite understanding, but you don't have to be a dedicated keyboard ninja to have a lucrative career in cybersecurity, okay? It's not the case, so you can relax. It would best behoove you to have technical knowledge in those positions, but their day-to-day -day tasks are not technical heavy, okay? So if you are a non-techie person or if you're just not interested in learning the ins and outs of coding, scripting, configurations, and stuff like that, there is still hope for you. You can still get a, a, a decent paying job in cybersecurity. The first one is definitely necessary for any type of business out there is legal, right? Every company, every firm should have a legal department. Right. And if you're a cybersecurity firm, you, you need to have a basic understanding. Well, you need to have an understanding of cybersecurity concepts in conjunction with the law and legal matters. Right. So this could be um, compliance issues. It could be regulations, PCI DSS. It could be NIST, RMF. There's all these type of legal legal regulations that legal departments, lawyers should understand and know how to maneuver when it comes to cybersecurity. So, again, the legal teams out there for cybersecurity firms or, or companies that deal in, in cybersecurity departments or have cybersecurity departments, they need lawyers. You can't be a lawyer. You can't be an effective legal team on a cybersecurity firm if you don't have basic understanding of cyber things. But again, if you're a lawyer, you're not coding, you're not programming, you're not hacking, you're not configuring networks, you're not changing out keyboards and doing hardware things. You're essentially a lawyer that is protecting the assets through legal means and or pursuing lawsuits or whatever the case have you, or you're um, advising the C-suite, you're advising managers on steps they should take to avoid li you know, legal liability on their, on their part. You'll have to understand things like the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1986. You'll have to understand things such as PSI, DSS, regulatory things um, there's so many out there it's not even funny but if you're into cyber and you're legal learn about that learn how to protect your company uh, minimize their legal liability and also if lawsuits coming around or you know the company has to sue somebody for some reason that's your department so that's the first position number six is policy analyst cybersecurity policy analyst what that person does is you take a look at an organization's policies regarding cybersecurity, regarding information security, uh, and it could be regarding all types of avenues under those umbrellas, such as access management, asset management, you know, all those things. As an analyst, you're making sure the policies make sense for the organization. You're making sure that they're up to date. You're making sure that they're relevant, of course. And you also, for the most part, making sure that the, the firm or the company is adhering to those policies which may include the next position we're going to get into. But for, for now, we're going to stick to number six, which is policy analyst, right? So you're just analyzing the policies, making sure they're correct, making sure they're relevant, making sure they're up to date, uh, making sure they make sense, obviously. And in a lot of, t a lot of cases, you, you probably work hand in hand with accounting on that side to make sure um, that they're financially, what's the word? Financially feasible, right? You don't want to draft policies that's going to cost the company so much money if they have to adhere to certain things. So you, you may be working in cahoots with accounting on policy side. A lot of policies, you, you, you'll be surprised to know that a lot of policies are or aren't enacted depending upon how much it's gonna cost, right? 
Number five is cybersecurity risk and compliance manager. Now these guys are crucial to any organization, all right? They, they want to manage risk that the company or the firm is taking. They want to reduce liability. They want to reduce any blowback that could happen due to any cybersecurity attacks or any policies that they're enacting, right? And the policies that they that are in place to reduce risk, right? So there are a lot of regulations out there that they adhere to, such as NIST RMF, again, PCI DSS. There's these regulatory bodies that make sure or put out guidelines and put out regulations that organizations can follow so they can minimize their liability, minimize their risk. Risk and compliance are huge. It's definitely non-technical. It's mostly administrative policy, drafting, policy uh, enforcement. Um, but again, it does help to have technical knowledge. Um, but your day-to-day -day is not going to be at a computer typing, coding, programming, configuring, all that stuff. You may be in charge of enforcing policies that dictate how those certain assets can get configured, um, certain coding practices, certain programming practices. Um, so it's more like a managerial overarching um, umbrella type uh, look down uh, approach. Um, but again, you're more like the dictator in that sense, and you're not the one doing the work. So when it comes to risk and compliance, you, you're basically pointing at those guys, the technical guys, and you say, hey, we got to do this because it is regulation to be safe, and it's their job to apply it. And it also helps to talk shop with them if you understand how to, how to talk tech shop. You know, terminology and the jargon and talking shop is very important with these positions. But again, um, having understanding is crucial, but being a technical person is not. Number four, we got cybersecurity data protection officer. This is similar to the others, um, the other ones, but this this one, this person is strictly adhered or strictly focused on protecting data in the organization. Generally, you have to have an analytical mind, assess threats, assess risks, and um, help the organization understand ways to protect their data. And a lot of times this has to do with access management, um, segmentation in a network. But again, this is not this is the non-technical side. So well, you're not the, the actual person doing the segmentation or, or, or doing the isolation or doing the access management. You're the one dictating the policies surrounding that. Then you have the tech guys uh, beneath you who plug away at the buttons and the keyboard and the command line. And again, a lot of these positions are really, they're, they're mostly adhering to policies that the company drafts and laws that are federal laws and state laws, right? So you have to understand all these regulatory bodies. You have to understand the regulations. You have to understand what you are obligated to follow per the law, right? And it is your job to make sure the tech guys who are generally underneath you on the hierarchy are configuring and setting and basically making sure Everything is running in accordance with those policies and those laws. Number three is the cybersecurity content writer. Um, this is definitely not technical. Tech, being technical helps. Having understanding helps. Having analytical mind helps. Being creative helps. Um, but these are people that, that generally can create courses, can create training programs, can create um, instruction manuals, guides. They can help with policies also. Um, as a content writer, you're just basically taking knowledge about an asset, it could be hardware, it could be software, and you're putting it into a technical guide, a technical uh, document for reading purposes. It could be for the employees, it could be for users, it could be for the C-suite, it could be for reports, it could be for all these type of things. It does help to have technical knowledge. But again, the day-to-day, -day, you're not typing command line, you're not configuring hardware, you're not, you're not doing anything that has to do with a, co a, com a computer network infrastructure or a system. You're just drafting documents, drafting instruction, drafting training, drafting courses that disperse to the intended recipient, whoever it has to be that reads those or needs those. Number two is cybersecurity product manager. In some organizations um, that actually create cybersecurity hardware products, such as, uh, you know, hardware routers or hardware access points or, or um, firewalls and things like that. Um, there's a product manager, all right? And this manager, again, this is a non-technical role. You should have technical knowledge, again, because you're you're managing a team that develops these hardware assets. But your day-to-day -day is not in the weeds, 
typing, coding, programming, and all these things, you're sort of like a managerial position. Um, but as a product manager, right, you're managing products. Uh, you make sure they get to market. Um, you're making sure they're going through the life cycle of development, you know, making sure security is built in, making sure functionality is built in, making sure the, the user user interface is friendly and all these things. So you're you're basically managing the creation of products, either hardware or software, but it's not technical, right? So again, focus on non-technical. It's not a technical thing. It's definitely a, a people thing. It's definitely a managerial thing. It's definitely, you got to be able to work well with people, manage people, guide people, um, guide processes, obviously, get the product built, get it to market, push it, sell it. Um, it's a lot of, that's a lot of businessy things. So again, cybersecurity product manager, you're not in there hacking, coding, programming. You get it now. That's, that's kind of the thing we've been going with, right? And the last one is cybersecurity program manager or cybersecurity project manager. Um, and again, this is mainly dealing with people. It's similar to a product manager, obviously, because you're, you're managing projects, you're managing programs, you're managing an organization. This could be CTO, this could be CEO, you know, you're, you're just, you're a people person, you know how to manage well. And obviously you need technical background if you're working in a cyber realm, right? But you're not necessarily the one hacking away on the keyboard. You do have to have knowledge, right? But it's not, not necessary, right? And if you're more of an administrative person, you're more of a people person, you know how to take groups of people, manage them for a common goal, you're perfect for a project manager. And cybersecurity project managers make lots of money. Uh, they're all very well paid, right? And and their day-to-day, -day, again, is furthest from technical, right? They're not going down to server rooms, typing code and configuring things. They're way at the top, probably the top of the top, paid the most, uh, well off, you know what I'm saying? Well-spoken, professional, and um, their data, I can promise you, I, I've seen them firsthand, their day-to-day -day is not technical at all. Meetings, phone calls, emails, managing you're a project manager right but you're a cybersecurity project manager so you have to have the understanding um you don't have to know you don't have to know how to code a python script right but you you have to be able to get your ideas out to those people tell them what you're looking for tell them what you want a certain product asset hardware or something to do and let them handle that right and you're the you're the you're the top dog in that in that section in that field um so there it is seven non-tech cybersecurity jobs if you were one of those people out there who felt discouraged because you want to be in cyber, but you always felt as if you don't, you're not necessarily interested in coding, you're not interested in programming, you're not interested in diving down into configurations and things like that, you're still good. If you're a great manager, if you're a great speaker, if you know how to communicate ideas well, um, you can definitely break into these fields, manage teams that actually do the hard technical things and you don't have a touch of keyboard as far as technical stuff for your entire career. There are certifications that deal specifically in project management, that deal specifically in legal things, that deal specifically in product managing and um, data protection and all those other regulations we talked about. And again, those are strictly administrative for the most part. You don't have to have technical knowledge. It does help, obviously. You should be able to talk shop to a degree. But when it gets to the weeds, don't worry about it. That's the video for today. If you like this type of content, please like, share, subscribe. Cyber Bunny's back. We're going to put more videos out. Um, and I'm out. Appreciate you guys.